Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Antonio's Movie Reviews. Today we have for you the 1998 movie Wild Things, which is an erotic thriller starring Nev Campbell, Denise Richards, Kevin Bacon, and Matt Dillon. Before watching it for this review, I hadn't seen the movie in a number of years, and I must say I believe it's gotten better with age. Usually when a movie is titled as an erotic thriller, it relies heavily on the eroticism and disregards the thriller part almost entirely. In some cases, but Wild Things is definitely not your run-of-the-mill late-night movie. It honestly has a very interesting and twisty plot, which is not very easy to follow in my opinion. With that being said though, I also have to say that this movie does not disappoint in the eroticism category either. Bill Murray is featured in the film as well, and he has a fantastic performance. Nev Campbell is nice, but honestly any man watching this can't help but to look at Denise Richards. She was absolutely stunning in this movie. Why don't we begin with a question? This prick can kiss my ass. The film has a 62% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but can you really trust them nowadays? Bacon plays Sergeant Ray Duquette. Did her last year for possession. Poor kid did six months in Camp Nine. Six months? Actually, I thought he was kind of cute. One thing I will say about this film in terms of the characters is that they all have a lot of depth to them, like levels of depth. Like they're very shallow at the beginning, but they all seem to be harboring some sort of like common ground between them all, in which case it'll be explored later in the movie. Can I play too? Or is it just for boys? Washing that old Jeep of mine is sort of a waste of time, don't you think? Not at all. How about if Nicole and I do it? Mr. Lombardo, you really wouldn't want me to walk, would you? Nev Campbell has a no nudity clause in this movie, which you'll understand as you watch the film. She was fresh off of Scream 2, and a lot of people were surprised to see her in this light afterwards. I see Nev Campbell today at 47 years old in the same light as Nicole Kidman and Robin Wright. Don't forget Sunday. Hi. Hi, Sandra. Teresa Russell plays Sandra Van Ryan, who is Kelly's mother, Denise Richards. Hi, Mr. Lombardo. Nice and dirty for you. <clears throat> but you might want to wait till the other car leaves. <laughs> the hose, Kelly, is right in front of the Jeep. <laughs> Sam the philanthropist. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what they say. Hey, I have to say this was definitely one of those scenes that put Denise Richards on the map. I mean, it's just, it's her face or something. I honestly don't mind her acting either. I feel as though, you know, the secret to her is that she's never really tried to be funny, which is, you know, worked well for her image in my opinion. She's always seen as this bad girl sort of actor in all of her movies. I don't really know what romantic comedy she's done. All I can really think of is that she's been married to Charlie Sheen, which is a major turnoff for me, unfortunately, but I have to overlook that for the purposes of this movie. So remember that Matt Dillon plays the school guidance counselor, Sam Lombardo, who is gonna be accused of something later in the movie. It's a barracuda. You weren't so busy chasing booty at the yacht club. Shit, man, I could say that about most of the girls you date. <laughs> Sandra Van Ryan. Sandra, what's up? Kelly skipped school today, Sam. Have you heard anything? Paul! And now in the movie, we actually see the plot formulates in which Kelly Van Ryan actually tells her mother that she's been raped by the guidance counselor Sam Lombardo, played by Matt Dillon. Note that we didn't actually see that take place. And you're saying that Sam Lombardo raped her? That son of a bitch must be insane. I know this isn't pleasant, Kelly, but these are serious charges and we need to know. Fingers. His finger. After that accusation, Lombardo is instantly the ridicule of the school. And unfortunately, it's time to go and hire a lawyer, Ken Bowden, who turns out to be none other than our buddy Bill Murray, who adds such a lighthearted charm to this movie and is definitely good in his performance, I must say. He's a scene stiller in every movie he plays in. 
We also see Robert Wagner, who stars as Tom Baxter. You, you may remember him from Austin Powers. He played number two, but his wife, Barbara Baxter, is the woman that you saw coming out when Kelly was washing the, the dirty Jeep. It definitely seemed as if Matt Dillon and Kevin Bacon and Robert Wagner, they all enjoyed making this movie. It was like unorthodox material for them as you may notice as opposed to what they usually play. And I understand that, especially Bill Murray who acted in this movie. Like it makes you wonder how they even decided to choose him for casting. I think Sandra's Range Rover. You tell that story to the cops, we can go after Sandra Van Ryan, right? I really like Nev Campbell in her movies aside from Scream, like The Craft and Studio 54, and also this movie. Those were good, you know, movies for her. When was this that Sam Lombardo gave you the ride? About a year ago? He said. Did you ask him to stop? I definitely feel like Nev is a decent enough actor, but she's sort of taken on that like Jamie Lee Curtis sort of role, where you know that she's played in other movies, except the only ones that you can think about is that one pivotal blockbuster. Can you tell us anything? Anything? Are you feeling confident about the case? Very, yes. The Lombardo. Although I am excited for Scream 5, I do feel like Nev Campbell has yet to receive her true breakout role. Maybe she'll get it when she's older. What were your exact words? What did you say? I screamed for him to stop. You screamed for him? He raped me on the floor of his shitty house. An emotional account of events and was not swayed by defense counsel's cross-examination. At trial, it turns out that one of the girls end up confessing to a lie. Susie, because Lombardo failed to bail her out on a minor drug charge. And the thing of it is, is that he gets out and then he decides that he's going to sue the Van Ryan family for defamation. I will mention that I haven't seen any of the sequels to the Wild Things movie. I hear they're not as good, though. Yes, may I be heard? Mr. Baxter, you are not trying this case. Kelly's pissed at Mr. Lombardo, too. It looks like having Bill Murray as your lawyer is going to pay off because they have that defamation lawsuit which is going to net eight and a half million dollars for Sam. The apprentice here committed perjury. It'll be all I can do to keep her. Robert Wagner is still at it. He's 90 years old today. Hold my calls, Lenore. Okay, Mr. Bowden. The part when Miss, Mr. Baxter came to sign the agreement so that they could get the settlement was hilarious, and Bill Murray gets credit for that. Sam and Kelly end up having this argument on Sam's last day at the school, and afterwards, Sam drives to a motel, and guess who he finds inside the motel? So you got my mom's money. How much? Whoa! It worked! We screwed the bitch! Is you're coming here, that's what's wrong. Are you fucking crazy? At three. Oh! <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's a Something, it's a long fucking way from over. Zero. Right? The three of us not to be seen together again. Thank you if you made it this far. You're entitled to a little bit of fan service. You do exactly as I say. And this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, is what makes this movie an erotic thriller, although I will say it's not over the top. At this point, this is a very good twist. I mean, imagine having never seen this movie. Nev Campbell, my goodness. I told you they were gonna make us look stupid. Police detective Ray Duquette suspects the trio are working a scam. You know, even if you really don't like the plot of this movie, you gotta say that the cinematography is pretty good. I mean, it's really stylish. It's a neo-noir after all. The Floridian ambiance of the movie provides a really good setting too. For the funds to an offshore account. Numbered account. Cops don't even know whose names. Playing Scream the year before, this movie definitely shows range in Campbell. Here, that's what I'm scared there's no one to trust. You can trust me. You know, Denise Richards ought to be lucky that they chose to cast Nev Campbell. There was a lot of girls that really could have given her a run for her money at that time. 
We gotta stay calm. All of us. Now, since the cell... The only people can fuck this up is us. Me, personally, I wouldn't have minded seeing, like, I mean, Shannon Elizabeth in that role. I mean, where was she at? American Pie came out that same year, right? 1998? Speaking of American Pie, Tara Reid actually auditioned for the film and didn't get the role. I mean, with Tara Reid out there, Shannon Elizabeth, even Sarah Michelle Gellar, I mean, what could you have seen in Nev Campbell? No offense to her. Oh, shit. We're about to see another great twist in this movie. Matt Dillon is quite the villain in this one, as opposed to There's Something About Mary, which he went on to right after. But we'll go through it all again tonight. <sighs> Kelly, you got a blanket or something in the back of your mom's rover? <laughs> So after Lombardo takes care of Susie, he solicits Kelly to help him dispose of the body, which turns out to be her wrapped up in a plastic bag and him dumping her into the river. That's definitely unexpected at this point in the movie. I mean, we just saw what happened at that motel. Everything looked so good. Been four wheeling. When it comes to money though, everybody seems to always be about cutting off loose ends and how many ways they can decrease the amount of ways they have to split it. And this is over. We're rich. But what if they find out? My you know, I really hate this scene that's coming up because Denise Richards, she definitely did not deserve what was about to happen. It looks like Duquette is on his way to confront a disturbed and confused Kelly Van Ryan. And it doesn't go well. Hello, Kel. He ends up claiming that Kelly shot first, which forced him to shoot in self-defense, which is a load of bull in my opinion because we never saw Kelly with a gun. But either way, he gets fired and it's revealed that he and Sam were working together. It wasn't part of the plan. Jesus, man, it couldn't have worked out better. They're convinced that Kelly Wax is no loose ends. Come tomorrow, you'll never see me. Stop. My least favorite part about this movie is the end in which several post credit scenes fill in the missing blanks so you'll have to watch the movie for yourself to see that but in other words thank you for joining me for another episode of Antonio's movie reviews I really hope that you liked my review on the 1998 wild things please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the film and I'll see you again very soon.